When treating patients with diabetes, it's really important that healthcare providers like me are certain in the type of diabetes that our patients have. If people don't get properly diagnosed, then they oftentimes don't get the appropriate treatment. If you've seen my video on Modi, you know exactly how true that can be. When making a diagnosis, we rely on clues from things like blood tests and our patient's physical characteristics and the way that the diabetes progresses and we correlate that together with what we most commonly see in type 1 and type 2. Somebody who's younger and thin with a more severe and sudden onset diabetes and ketoacidosis is a classic type 1. An older adult who's overweight with a more gradual increase in glucose is probably a type 2 diabetic. And day in and day out, we apply the features that we observe in our patients to help us determine the type of diabetes they have and get them the treatment that they need. But sometimes, things aren't quite as they appear to be. In today's Sugar High video, we're exploring another one of the more rare forms of diabetes called LADA. Welcome to Sugar High Guys, I'm PA David, I'm a certified diabetes specialty PA in Southern California, and as always, Sugar High is your channel for relatable and reliable diabetes information that's always easy to understand. LADA stands for Latent Autoimmune Diabetes in Adults, and is often referred to as Diabetes 1.5. It's technically a subtype of type 1 diabetes, but its features give it the appearance of being sort of a blend of type 1 and type 2 and that can make it pretty difficult to identify, especially when many healthcare providers kind of forget that this type of diabetes even exists. Type 2 diabetes is incredibly prevalent. About 400 million people in the world have type 2 diabetes, so we spend a lot of time focusing on it and learning how to treat it. But when we're focused in so much on one version of diabetes, it's unfortunately easy to lose sight of the fact that there are other possibilities out there too. It's estimated that about 50% of people diagnosed with type 2 diabetes unrelated to obesity actually have LADA. And for that reason, about 5-10% to of adults diagnosed with type 2 diabetes overall are actually misdiagnosed and should have been diagnosed with LADA. And that adds up to as many as 40 million people who aren't properly diagnosed. So let's see if we can raise our awareness a little bit about what LADA is and what it looks like. Now there's always exceptions, right? But classic type 1 diabetes most frequently occurs in childhood or young adulthood and commonly has this rapid onset caused by a person's own immune system destroying the insulin producing cells in the pancreas. Type 2 most commonly starts at a later age and has a much more gradual progression caused by resistance to insulin rather than autoimmune attack. Well, LADA is pretty much a blend of these characteristics, and if we fail to recognize certain key components, it can be pretty easy to mistake the diagnosis. Like type 1 diabetes, LADA is caused by an autoimmune attack on the beta cells in the pancreas, which eventually destroys the ability to produce enough insulin. But unlike typical type 1, it starts at an older age and progresses much more slowly and gradually. And that gradual onset, starting in somebody's 40s or 50s rather than in their teens or 20s, can easily give the initial appearance of being type 2. The symptoms of LADA are basically the standard symptoms of diabetes in general. And that means that hopefully you won't have any symptoms because the best way to get diagnosed with diabetes is early on in the course of the disease before the symptoms develop. I mean, ideally your doctor would order a routine blood test for a regular physical exam and might coincidentally notice that the glucose is higher than normal. Although admittedly catching it earlier in the course like that where the glucose elevation is still mild does make it a little easier to misdiagnose it as type 2. But if someone with a lot of does get symptoms when the glucose gets really high, typical diabetes symptoms are unintentional weight loss, constant thirst, constant hunger, and frequent urination. So now that we know a little bit more about what LADA looks like, we can use that to have a better understanding of when to suspect LADA. 
If a person in their 40s or 50s has been diagnosed with diabetes, but they're slimmer rather than heavier, that might be a good indication that something's not quite the norm for typical type 2. Since LADA is an autoimmune condition, if you have other autoimmune disorders as well, like Hashimoto thyroid disease, Graves disease, or Addison's disease, that might be another indicator that LADA is a possibility. Because I mean, look, if your immune system is willing to attack one part of your body, it's not that far-fetched to think that it might be willing to attack another part like your pancreas. Even if you don't personally have other autoimmune conditions yourself, if other people in your family have autoimmune disorders like thyroid issues or rheumatoid arthritis, that ought to grab your attention. Lastly, when someone who's diagnosed with type 2 diabetes needs insulin much earlier in the course of the treatment, that should raise our a lot of suspicions as well. People with type 2 diabetes often never need insulin, but even when they do, it normally takes many years to get to that point. When a type 2 diabetic gets to the point that they're needing insulin sooner than we'd expect, like within just a couple of years, LADA may actually be the true diagnosis. So if that's starting to sound like you, you might be wondering how we can know for sure whether your situation is LADA. Well, if we want to confirm the diagnosis, we can do a few blood tests that will usually tell us for sure. Remember how we said that in type 1 and LADA, the immune system produces antibodies against the beta cells in the pancreas? Well, we can actually measure those antibodies with a simple blood test. And if those antibodies are present, boom, diagnosis confirmed. The most common antibody involved is called the GAD65 autoantibody, and that's the test that we would definitely want to start with. But there are several different antibodies that can be at play, and if your doctor wants to check for a bunch of them all at once, he or she can order what's called an autoimmune diabetes panel. That word panel means that it's all the necessary antibody tests ordered together in one package so that your healthcare provider doesn't even have to remember to order each test individually. It's kind of like ordering a number one meal at McDonald's instead of ordering the burger, fries, and drink individually. And by the way, that is just an example of how it works. Please don't get all like, David said diabetics can eat McDonald's. Another test that's helpful when trying to differentiate LADA from type 2 diabetes is called the C-peptide. C-peptide is a nice measurement of how much insulin your pancreas is still making. When you make insulin, the protein chain sort of wraps back on itself, and then this bend here at the end gets sort of cut off. So for every molecule of this C-peptide that we can measure, it means that one molecule of insulin got created in your body, since making insulin is the only place where this stuff comes from. If the C-peptide is low, or if there's none, that would imply that you're not making enough insulin and would suggest LADA or type 1. In type 2 diabetes, your body's resistant to insulin, so the pancreas cranks out a ton of it, which causes the C-peptide to often either be normal or even high. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the thing that makes identifying the diagnosis of LADA so important is that we need to get people the proper treatment. So let's talk a little bit about how LADA is treated. Since the insulin producing cells get destroyed in people with this condition, insulin replacement always becomes necessary. This can be done with a combination of long-acting insulin and short-acting insulin at mealtimes or through the use of an insulin pump. However, since in LADA the damage to the insulin producing cells is so slow and gradual, we often don't need to jump to insulin right away. So long as there's a certain amount of beta cell function still left, certain oral medications called DPP-4s or non-insulin injected medications called GLP-1s can often be effective for several months to several years. Now, I'm not going to go into extended details about each one of those medications in this video. You can check out other videos on my channel that explain what those meds are and how they work. But just as a quick summary, DPP-4s would include medications that you might have heard of called Genuvia, Trigenta, or Onglyza, and others depending on what country you might happen to be watching from. GLP-1 medications include things like Victoza, Bidurion, Trulicity, Ozempic, and there's others as well. The idea is that these medications can actually be protective of the beta cells in the pancreas and they delay the need to start insulin for much longer. So far, no medication can completely win over an autoimmune attack and insulin eventually becomes necessary, but it is nice to know that if we treat it correctly, we can put that off for a while. 
Some people with LADA, particularly those who are overweight, may also have some resistance to insulin in addition to the attack on the beta cells. And for those people, metformin can be useful with the hope of somewhat increasing the insulin sensitivity. Oral medications called sulfonylureas like glipizide, glyburide, or glimepiride can initially reduce the blood glucose by causing the pancreas to release what insulin is still there. But the way that these medications work may actually speed up the process of the beta cells failing, causing you to require insulin even sooner rather than later. And for that reason, those medications are best to be avoided in patients with LADA. Within the diabetes community, the designation of LADA is still a bit debated. Camp Yes LADA says, LADA is a unique condition that's separate from type 1 and from type 2. Sure, it's an autoimmune attack on the insulin producing cells in the pancreas, but it behaves differently. It can be treated differently. It's much slower than type 1 and should be viewed as its own condition. Camp No LADA says, hey, LADA is just type 1 diabetes. It's autoimmune destruction of the beta cells and that is by definition type 1. So what if there's different ways you can treat it? There's multiple ways that you can treat type 2 diabetes. There's multiple ways you can treat type 1 diabetes, depending on where they are in the course of the disease. Type 2 diabetics can have wide variability in how it progresses, and so can type 1. It just so happens that in these patients, it takes a lot longer for the beta cells to get destroyed, but it's the same process. And because of this, LADA is still not technically recognized as an officially designated type of diabetes. But within the diabetes community, it's widely embraced and generally looked at as its own thing. So that is LADA. If there's any truth in the statistics, there ought to be a pretty good chunk of you watching this that this applies to. And if you're starting to wonder if maybe your diabetes isn't quite what it appeared to be on the surface, make sure you talk to your healthcare provider about it and see what you both can learn together about having the best understanding of your specific diabetes situation. If you found this information helpful, please do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button. That really can help this information reach as many people as possible. If you have friends or family members that you think might benefit from knowing more about LADA, feel free to share this video with them. Share it on your social media. Let's really get the word about LADA out there so that people can get the proper treatment that they really need. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to Sugar High to keep up with everything that you wanna know about diabetes. I'll see you in the next video.